In this video, we're going to show you how a suspension and steering component inspection may have saved us thousands of dollars or even our lives. I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. Our focus this year was on safe RVing, so we took a break from renovation and chose to make sure that we also invest on keeping our older motorhome as well as ourselves protected on the road. In this series, we shared our roadside assistance plans if the motorhome or our towed break down or even if we have a flat tire on the road or at our home base. As well as our emergency plans for getting help with everything from the RV to passengers in the event of a medical emergency. There's a link here as well as in the description of this video to watch those episodes. While at an FMCA rally in Wyoming, we had the opportunity to have our 2006 Alphacia motorhome inspected by Henderson lineup. Today we'll see what Rosie's inspection turned up and what I'll do to remedy those issues. Okay, so on the wheel you're just going to kind of go back and forth slightly like that. Yep, that's okay. real that's easy, good. so we're just, just looking keep for doing play. That for a little while in the steering gear box. This is a Freightliner XC. Okay. So right now I can see I can see the uh, input shaft to the steering gear box is moving and so is the output shaft. So go a little bit less with it. A little bit less. Have you had any uh, play in the wheel at all when you're driving it? Not a lot. Okay. A little bit of play. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to grab the input uh, shaft from down here. Okay, just so hands off on the wheel for a second. See if I can feel so the wheel will move back and forth a little bit. Does it have a front sway bar in it? Yes, it does. Okay. And yeah, so it's an inch and a half front sway bar. The bushings are looking fairly chewed up. Um, pretty good gap. There's at least a 16th of an inch gap between the lower bushing on the, uh, on the driver side, lower one. So they're pretty uh, worn. Actually, oh, the passenger side upper bushings are totally gone. Oh, so passenger that, side bushings are gone? Yeah. So that sway bar right now is uh, definitely limited in its effectiveness. The, uh, the saddle bracket bushings are okay, um, but those end link bushings are pretty chewed up and that's typical on these Freightliners, the older XCs. Um, so we, possibly recommend the, the Yeah, we can either do a replacement, uh, uh, replacement end link and bushing kit or we can upgrade the whole bar, which will come with new end links. Um, okay, they do have a safety plus steering stabilizer. Okay. So we'll take a look at is that. Is it a blue? Is it a blue unit? It's a blue unit. Okay. Yep. Okay, go ahead and rock the wheel now. Same as you did before. Just go ahead and start rocking it a little bit. A little bit. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Do a, do a little more. Okay, a little bit more. So right now I'm looking. I've already looked at the steering gear. Now I'm looking at the front drag link and a little bit more. Front drag link end looks okay. That drag link end also looks okay. Intermediate link. Tie rods. Does look okay. Haven't gotten there yet. Okay, so this one, this does have the older style uh, three bolt bell crank. Okay, SS4. SS100 SS would be an upgrade. On this particular one, I'm not seeing a whole lot of side play in it. I do think that we could, we could help free up the steering though by going to that SS100. Okay, got it marked. It's funny, some of the older ones actually seems like they were built to a different spec, so Do I don't know. Do you think know. the Safety Plus helps them at all? Safety Plus could be, uh, yeah, definitely could be overcoming some stiffness in the steering, yes. but the bell crank will just help that work better. That rear tie rod end looks okay. Okay, both of the tie rod ends look okay. Okay, the front track bar, the the passenger side boot is torn. Okay. Looking for play. I'm not, I'm not seeing a whole lot of movement in it, but with that boot being torn, eventually that joint can wear out uh, just as water gets in there. Yep, keep rocking it. Looks the uh, the uh, uh, axle side, so the driver's side, does have a little tear in it as well. Okay. Again, so I'm not seeing a whole lot of movement in it, um, but yeah, once those boots tear, they can get, uh, get water debris in there. They actually already have motion control units installed. Okay. 
BV5 6065, so correct part number on those. Um, and the front shock? Front shock is a sax. OEM? Yep, OEM sax. Safety plus, definitely looks like it's been on here for a while. Um, a little bit of squeaking in it, which can happen. Um, it looks like it is still uh, still holding in there okay. I don't, I don't think it's... Uh, Yep, the installation of the Safety Plus looks good. It looks to me like uh, the left front wheel seal actually um, is leaking. So I, uh, I see quite a bit of gear oil around that left front, um, that left front hub. The brake drums look pretty damp. Let me get a picture of that. So the wheel seal is actually leaking? Yeah, yeah, because there's a... You see, really, and you see some residual oil on the ground then. Yeah, yeah, okay. that has to be. They must have oil bath bearings because there's a, there's nowhere else for that to be coming from. Then I'll take a picture of the uh, the passenger side for comparison, so you can see the difference between the two. That does it for the front. Um, did you happen to get the date code on the tire? Not yet. Okay, you need to help uh, look for that. Yeah, a little. <laughs> Twenty two twenty. Twenty. Um, definitely see an issue the left front um, wheel seal appears to be oh. leaking so your brakes are fairly fairly damp there's no other fluid that would be there other than it's probably an oil bath bearing so now we'll uh, we'll do the same under the rear suspension um, can you hear me Mike yeah I got you what was that okay just making sure you're nearby so this is the open open style trailing arms <laughs> so it can take a sway bar OEM I mean on the rear yeah OEM on the rear um, you no want me to push the of, back? No signs of leakage, track, but track yeah, Coney's would be an upgrade. Um, motion control units on the back as well. Again, looks like a good install. Okay. Um, you want me to push the back for the track bar? Uh, yeah, let me, one second. Let me get where I can watch. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, axle side looks okay. There's a little bit on the frame side. I wouldn't say it's... Is that enough? Wouldn't, wouldn't say it's excessive. Yeah, that's good. Okay, cool. So just starting with the front with what we saw. So um, no uh, no significant play in the steering gear, so that's good. Okay. Uh, next thing we checked is, uh, so the drag links, linkage back uh, from there. Drag links looked okay. Uh, the pivot point for the arm that connects the two drag links, that's, the, we call it the bell crank. Right. Um, that is OEM. And uh, I didn't actually see side play in it which actually isn't too surprising. This particular range of years, it seems like they did a pretty good job getting the play out, but what that means is that there could be some extra stiffness in there because again, that's just a bushing in right. there. So and you can either- And because you've got a safety plus on it, it's probably masking yeah. masking over what it's really doing. So. Yeah, okay. good point. Yep, yeah, so you do already have a safety plus steering stabilizer, which is great. That's what we would recommend you put on there if you didn't already have it. Okay. It looks like it's been on there a while, but appears to be in good condition. Okay. Um, you can always check to confirm that by raising the front wheels off the ground and turn the, the steering all the way to one direction and then let go. Make sure it snaps back on center, not too fast, but fairly rapidly and then precisely stops center and then do the same in the other direction. Okay. Okay. Um, are, are you having any uh, steering issues at all when you drive down the road? Is it? Uh, no, not really. Okay. No, no, no movement in the wheel. And then how is it in the wind? It's okay. I mean, if you're in heavy wind, I feel it. So, so you got OEM shocks on here and you got 42,000 miles. How is the ride? Um, well, that's when it came to your booth and I was talking to you guys, how I was getting some of that. Yeah. You know, and then I didn't know if that was, you know, if shocks would fix that issue or. Yeah. So, so you do have the OEM shocks on there. You actually do already have our super steer motion control units on there. Okay. So that is helping out. Okay. Um, but the SAC shocks do work uh, not quite as well as the Coney's. So we would recommend going with the Coney shock absorbers to help further control that body movement, okay. that rocking. Yeah, um, it's, it's a pretty common one on this particular coach. That it's pretty heavy in the front and the rear. And what these shocks are is a frequency dampening shock. So what's really nice about them is they work a lot on the rebound and it gives you a better, it gives you a softer ride. Okay. Yeah. That's what we like about them. Right. Okay. And they can, there's enough extra there in compression too to uh, 
just to help stop some of that front end dive you might feel. That's mm -hmm. something that's common on these Freightliners. You step on the brakes and slow speed maneuvering and you feel like you're just constantly doing right. this kind of thing. Right. The motion control units you already have do help with that as well. So it's good that you already have kind of one piece of the, the puzzle for improving on that. The, the biggest one, yeah, just from a safety standpoint really is that left front wheel seal leak. So I could see a, a fair amount of fluid kind of around the brake shoes. It looked like it had been kind of accumulating there for a while. Okay. Um, so uh, this must have oil bath bearings um, on it. So because there's no other place for that oil to really come from on the, the front axle of one of these coaches. So what are we looking at if, these, um, uh, if this thing starts to leak more, what's going to happen? Well, uh, already now getting that much oil in your brake shoes can decrease your braking performance on that. Okay. Um, do you ever notice it tending to favor the right when you hit the brakes or is it? No, not pretty? really. Okay. okay. No. Okay. But uh, yeah, that, that can uh, diminish your braking performance. Um, and eventually, if all the oil leaks out, then you can burn up the bearing too. Okay. Um, so that that really is uh, both a, a safety and a, a durability issue that really should should be prioritized. Your, your front anti sway bar bushings uh, on the end links, those are pretty chewed up. They're actually missing on the top of the uh, passenger side end link. Okay. It's very common on these earlier Freightliners, just the design of bushings they used as the the coach squats down and then raises back up, just that constant crushing on them eventually just wears them out and they fall apart. Um, so a couple things you can do on that. We do have a kit where you can just replace those with new polyurethane bushings and new end links. Um, you can also upgrade your anti-sway bar to a larger sway bar, which would kind of further cut down on that body roll. Okay. It can go from inch and a half to inch and three quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and that does come with new end links and bushings too. So, I mean, if you're looking for an upgrade, that's probably what I would recommend since you're already going to be in there working on that, but is a little bit extra. So it just depends on what you want to do with that. And you've already got the motion control, so you've already had that body roll happening. Mm -hmm. And so upgrading yeah. the sway bar is going to reduce even more because every eighth of an inch you go up in one of these uh, sway bars, about a 30% reduction in body roll, so it's, it's significant. Front, front okay. track bar, we looked at that as well. Um, the boots were cracked on that, um, but uh, didn't actually see any uh, any movement in it. Okay. But as, as those boots uh, wear out, that just lets water and dirt and debris get into those joints, mm -hmm. so that can cause it to wear out over time. At minimum, something to, uh, something to keep an eye on. Some people would change them out once you know they see those have been cracked for a while but again I don't see movement right now so it's kind of up to you if you want to keep an eye on it or just just do that okay um, but uh, so what the track bar does again that that controls side to side motion in your front axle so as that starts to wear uh, then you can get some a little bit excess movement and that can uh, diminish your steering response just make it not as easy to control okay um, very critical component um, when you have an airbag suspension, since the airbags don't really do anything to control that lateral movement. Right. Um, then in the in the back, um, you also have motion control units there. Um, we checked your uh, your rear anti sway or sorry your rear track bar as well, um, and just a little bit of movement in the frame bracket side, but wouldn't say it's excessive. Typically, I see more in the the rear track bars on these things, just a little bit more. Um, so it, it didn't look like an excessive amount to me. Um, boots looked okay on that one, uh, as far as I could, as I could see. So um, that one, not, not quite as much of a concern. Um, again, you still got the sack shocks in the back. You do have the motion control units installed in the back as well, along with the front. So those mm -hmm. are working to control yeah. that sway. That up. about covers it. One yeah. last thing I'll note too, um, uh, you do have a TRW steering, con uh, steering um, a module in the front for your steering, steering control, steering gear, and these, those are adjustable. So sometimes you can fine tune if you ever get to it to where if you're getting too much play, those things are available to fine tune oh, okay. down. You can actually turn the knob. They're very, very sensitive though, so uh, about That's an eighth of a turn would be way too much. You want to be really <laughs> okay. careful yeah. on that. I think I'd have a guy who knows what he's doing do it. That's so, right. Yeah. Yeah. We have a shop up in Grants Pass, Oregon, so if you're up in our area, it's a great place to come to have some of this work done otherwise we can send you to a shop in any place uh, around the country most of the time we're pretty heavy out on the west coast uh, it's summertime a little bit harder to find them in the east coast except for florida we're really good in florida we'll send you an email 
with some of these prices and also a, a location for where you can have a shop work done if it's not in Oregon. Okay. All right. So I appreciate you guys going over this. How much of this, because I do a lot of my own, you know, do-it-yourself type stuff, how much is this something that I can tackle and how much would be something that I would have to take it into a shop to actually have them do it? Sure, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I would say the, the front sway bar end links or the whole front sway bar would probably be a uh, definitely easy do-it-yourselfer right. job. Okay. Um, so that, that would be doable. The bell crank will be a little bit more tricky because on these alphas, you do have a compartment area, it looks like a, a heater, water heater, right next to where the large bolt is on that bell crank. So not to say it's not doable, but just your space is a little more limited on this particular model. Okay. Um, the Coney shocks uh, typically are not too bad to do on the front. Um, the rears can also be done on the ground, but it's a lot easier to do if you have ramps in the back. Okay. Um, and then the rear sway bar, um, that would probably be eh, maybe more of a, a shop type project. Um, the wheel seal, probably a bit more that, of a shop. That's type definitely project. a shop thing. I'm yeah. not doing that. Yeah. So one thing to keep in mind, just talking about do-it-yourselfers, is that we really are trying to to help them out as much as possible. For some of our products, we do have step-by-step uh, -step videos. Now, for the stuff on this particular coach, we don't have that yet. However, we do have. Uh, seven to four Pacific time, Monday through Friday, we have real people answering phone calls on tech support type stuff. Oh, okay, so if you have a question, they can kind of walk you through it over the phone. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. Because the one thing, the one upgrade you were talking about with that uh, upgrading the, what was it, the sway bar? Front sway bar, The yeah. front sway bar. That one I might tackle myself, and then, you know, that way, I can kind of look at what I got, and I should be able to, based on that, pretty much figure out but if I had any questions, I can call and then you guys can kind of walk me through it. Exactly, yep. Okay. And you can you can go on our e-store, supersteerparts.com. You can look up the part number of that sway bar, download the instructions so you can look at it ahead of time, just see what those steps involve. Oh, okay, okay. That's a good idea. That's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah, and then when you if, if you do run into any problems, you can give us a call. Uh, any difficult questions, we can fall back on. So my uncle, John Henderson, who runs Supersteer, he was a tech for... I want to say over 30, at least 20 to 30 years. Uh, he has over 40 years experience at Henderson's lineup and um, he can help walk you through uh, okay. problems like that if, if none of the rest of the team, if I can't help. Yeah, and for, for those projects that you may not feel comfortable tackling yourself, and right. I certainly can't blame you for that, um, we uh, we do have a network of shops across the country that we've got relationships established with. So we, right. we can find somebody to help you out no matter where you are. Okay, that's, that sounds great. Henderson Lineup did a pretty thorough inspection, considering that we didn't bring it into their shop. I also didn't feel like they tried to oversell me. They did a really great analysis of what needs to be replaced and what needs to be replaced in the future, as well as a priority as what needs to be taken care of ASAP or what can wait a little bit. On the next episode, we'll show you how Jamie replaced the front sway bar and what we did about the front wheel seal. Hope this video was helpful. I'd really appreciate it if you'd share it with your friends and family, anybody who could benefit from this. And if you're not yet a subscriber, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell because that way you'll be notified each time we put up a new video. And make sure to leave a comment. That way you can be part of the conversation. Until next time. We'll see you. See ya. Hey, Roamers. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Roaming with Rosie. For more information regarding this video, please check out the links in the video description below. As well as products and equipment we use and recommend. We sometimes do receive a small commission when you use our links for purchases, which is a great way at no additional cost to you to help offset some of our production costs. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos and subscribing to Roaming with Rosie. We'd love to hear from you and encourage your comments and questions. Until next time, see ya! Thank you.